I had to say that before I put the recording on. Okay, so when we add these two true equations together, I want you to look at our new equation. Is it still true? It's still true, isn't it? Okay, and we're going to use this fact to help us solve some problems, uh, solve some systems of equations by this new method. What's this new method called? Elimination. elimination. Okay, so elimination. Um, elimination works like this. Let's say I have an equation like uh, 3x plus 2y equals 7. And I have another equation like negative 3x uh, plus 4y equals 5. Now, think about solving this by substitution. Probably not going to be very fun, is it? We, we're going to have to solve one of those two equations for either x or y. Are we going to end up with fractions? Yeah. Yeah. Which is okay. We can we can do that, but it's it's kind of bad. Um, but the idea with elimination is, if we have them in the same form, which usually we like them to be in standard form like this, um, we can just add each side of the equations together. So I can add these sides together. What's 3x plus negative 3x? Zero. Zero. And then 2y plus 4y. And 7 plus 5. So when I add these two equations together, what happens to the x's? What, what's the name of this process? Elimination. They are eliminated. That is right. That's fun. Someone's mom is an English teacher. That's right. They are eliminated. And we end up not having any X's in our equation. Which is fantabulous because then we can solve. We got Y equals 2. And once we know that Y is equal to 2, well then up here in the top equation, what can we put right there where Y is? 2. So you're telling me that you taught substitution well, well, hold on a minute. You, hold on a minute before before you before you string me up. You might want to watch the whole lesson. So that equals seven. Uh, subtract four from both sides. That equals three. X equals one. And I and I want to point out if we put y equals two in the bottom equation, negative three x plus four times two equals five negative 3x plus 8 equals 5. Negative 3x equals, if we subtract 8 from both sides, negative 3. Mm -hmm. And then divide both sides by negative 3. x still equals positive 1, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it doesn't matter which equation you plug it back into. You should get the same result for the other variable. Okay. So, elimination looks, looks, uh, Great, doesn't it? And Matt's like, "What the heck, Mr. Collard? Why the why would you, why the heck would you show me substitution when we could just use elimination?" Well, okay. Here, look at this system of equations. What's going to happen when I add them together? What's going to happen when I add those? I'm going to get four x. Uh, subtract 2y equals 36, which is true, but not helpful because I still have two variables, right? So does this mean that we can't use elimination? No. No, no it just means we have to be sneaky about it. Sneaky? It means, yeah, we, it means we have to maybe manipulate things around so that elimination happens, okay? So I'm looking at... Oof, I'm looking at the y's here. They already have opposite signs, which is good. They need to have opposite signs. If there were some way I could make that one a 3y. Times, times okay. Let's times. So what that means is I'm going to leave the top equation alone. I'm not going to do anything to it. Okay. I'm leaving it alone. On the bottom equation, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3. So that means every term on both sides has to be multiplied by 3. And that gives me 9x plus 3y up equals 
Okay, so I have this new system. You with me, Jim? Paying attention? Okay. So, what's now going to happen when I add these two equations together? Yes, the y's are eliminated. And I end up with 10x equals 50, 60, 60? X equals? Well, now what? Are we done? No, we need a plug in. Okay, so where do I plug it back in? Yeah, it, and probably what we want to do is go back to one of the original equations. Whichever one's the simplest. I'm, I, I'm thinking right there. Right here, I'm just going to put a 6. So if I subtract 6 from both sides, I get negative 3y equals 18. Divide by negative 3. And y equals negative 6. So here's our point. 6, negative 6. And, just so you know, look in the bottom equation. 3 times 6 is 18 plus negative 6, which is y, would equal 12, wouldn't it? Right. it? It will. That point does satisfy both of our original equations. Okay, so what's the problem? There's no problem. We're done. We got it. We just had to do a little work to get there. And you can kind of just, people can do it differently. Like you and your friend might decide to get rid of different variables. Um, here. Here's a system. So, looking at it right now, is uh, elimination going to work real well? Yeah. Well, if, if we just added it the way they are. Nope. Oh, no. Okay. So, we want to manipulate it around a little bit, okay? Now, there's two different ways at least that are pretty obvious though what we could do okay so what'd you say times the top one by two what do you guys think about that times the top equation by two what would that give me right here positive six x or sorry y and then would they eliminate did anybody see something different negative two on the bottom okay if we multiply the bottom equation by negative two that would give us positive 10x right here. Right. And then the x's would eliminate, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Will both work? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they will. Um, I think if, just because of my overall laziness, I would probably multiply the top equation by 2 just because I don't want to have to multiply by a negative number mm -hmm. if I don't have to. All right? So since these already have opposite signs, We'll just go with that. So negative 20x uh, plus 6y equals 2. And that's what you're going to forget. I'm telling you right now. You're going to forget to multiply the other side of the equation. I, I guarantee you. You're going to do that. Think about it every time. Be careful. Let's leave the bottom equation the way it is. Okay, is elimination going to work now? Yeah. So you guys understand, these have to have opposite signs. Sometimes you just have to multiply by negative 1 to make that happen. Okay? But they have to have opposite signs or they're not going to be eliminated. They will not add up to 0. So we end up with negative 25x equals 25. Okay? And then... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here in this bottom equation. And right where x is, what am I going to put? And why did I put it in the bottom equation and not in the top equation? Because there's room underneath the bottom one to do work. And so that's where I put it. That's, that's, that's the best answer I have. It would be just as easy to put it right there. But since there's room here... And you are going to write down the two original equations. That's just a must, okay? So anyway, I got uh, 5 minus 6y equals 23. I'm going to 
subtract 5 from both sides and you guys can already see the answer is negative 3 yeah and I'm going to give my answer as an ordered pair like if I graph them this is the point where the intersection would be this is easy. I told you you'd like it um, now do you still have to know how to do substitution I mean when I give you an equation like this or you end up with one like this See, this is not an elimination type of problem. This is a problem where I'm going to take what y is equal to and put it right there. Mm -hmm. That's substitution. So there are times when one is much easier than the other. And you need to be able to do both. I'm going to give you assignments every day from now for the next month or so. And I'm going to give you some that you have to use substitution on and some you have to use elimination on. Uh, on the test, I have to see that you use the right method or I'm going to mark it wrong. Okay, so you have to use both of these methods. And I'm, I'm just going to say this too. In real life, problems where answers are rarely whole numbers or integers, I probably use substitution more often, even though it's nice when elimination works. So you got a piece of paper? Blank, preferably. Here's your system. Write it down. Write the original system down. And, and make sure you have room to work here. And then you make up your mind which variable you want to eliminate. Make that happen. Go ahead and solve this system and then we'll talk about it. Remember, in order for them to eliminate, they have to have opposite signs. They can't just both be 4x or 3y. They have to, one has to be like positive 4x and the other one has to be negative 4x. Okay. You guys aren't getting whole numbers or integer answer? Um, I'm telling you right now, the answers are integers. Okay. So, who eliminated the X's? Who eliminated the Y's? So you understand you're both right. Um, I guess I guess I'll eliminate the X's. I'm, I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 4. And that gives me negative 4x subtract 16y equals negative 88. And then I'm going to leave the bottom equation the way it is. Um, 
So that way my x's are eliminated. They add up to 0. I get negative 15y equals negative 75. And then I can divide by negative 15. And I know my answer is positive. Positive 5? Positive 5. And then, let's see, I guess I could just put that right here, can't I? 4x plus 5 equals 13. So, 4x equals 8. And that means x equals 2. I forgot to put a negative sign. Oh, there are so many. These are both positive. There are so many ways to mess this up, aren't there? Uh, I don't think anything here is particularly difficult, but there are a lot of little things. And if you miss a sign, if you make it do a multiplication incorrect, anything like that, it, it's going to get you. That's one reason why we do make the answers integers, so that if you do get an answer on these today that's not an integer, you need you need to go back and look at it. Ask me for help. Let's figure out what's going on. Okay. Um, okay. Turn to page. Uh, 232. Okay, so top of that page, modeling with mathematics, you see a couple of delivery vans, I think. Uh, a business with two locations buys seven large delivery vans and five small ones. I'm going to write that down. Seven of the large and five of the small delivery vans. Uh, location A receives five large vans and two small vans. I get, gosh, I'm going to have to write that down. Location A, uh, they get five large and two small and then location oh and they and they the total cost of those vans is $235,000 okay uh, location B B uh, receives two large vans only and then three of the small and that is $160,000 worth Okay, I didn't just read the problem and stare at it, did I? Did I stop along the way and write down every single piece of information and label what it is? Yep. I didn't write out a bunch of words or anything like that, but I understand what this is, is saying to me, don't I? Okay? Now, we can figure out, well, we're asked now to figure out how much does a large van cost and how much does a small one cost. So we have two variables here the cost of the large van and the cost of the small van. All right? So what do we know about five times the cost of a large van and two times the cost of a small van? What do we know about the cost there? Five times the cost here plus two times the cost here. No? Hmm. <laughs> I'm letting your brains catch up. Do you guys know how much a large van cost? Do you, does it tell you how much it costs? No. Does it tell you how much a small one costs? No. Is that what we're supposed to figure out? Uh -huh. Okay. Do we, now they sent five large ones to location A and two small ones to location A. Uh -huh. And they tell us that the total cost for that, $235,000. So if I take five times L plus two times S, what do you think about that? Your brain's catching up now? Okay. So the 
five times the cost of a large van plus two times the cost of a small van is $235,000. Now look down below. Does this one make more sense now? Two times the cost of a large van. What do I put here? Plus three times the cost of a small van equals Okay, that is a system of equations that we should be able to solve, either by substitution or elimination. Okay, does substitution look fun? Uh, no. No? Does elimination look fun? Not really, but it's better. Not really, but better. Actually, no. No, not really. <laughs> Can you multiply 2 by anything and make it a 5? No. Can you multiply 2 by anything and make it a 3? No. So it's a what, what, if, what if this? What if I made that a 10 and this a 10? Okay, but like Can I do that? Can I mess with both equations? Yeah. Only in desperate need. Only in times of desperate, desperate need. Thomas? Oh, you're just scratching your head? You do. Yeah, so let's see. Let's let's times this top one by two. Like that's the big that you got. It is. It is. Aren't you glad you have a calculator? Yes. And then let's multiply this bottom one by negative, negative five. Good job. Negative. By negative five. So I can do this. This top bit's okay. Like two times five L. That's okay. Two times two S. We can do that. And two times two hundred thirty-five thousand is four hundred seventy thousand, isn't it? You guys with a calculator, or, or we can do that in our head. Okay, on the bottom, what do we got right here? Negative ten L. So, oh, oh. Uh, five eight hundred thousand. Well, do it. Check me. Check my multiplication. You don't think I'm right on this one? No, the other one. Go back. Like instead of 45, it's 50. Because 2 times 25 is 50, not 45. Oh, that's an S. Oh, okay. And that's why I hate using S as a variable. That's why I was so confused. That, was that is confusing. <laughs> Yes, that's an S. Sorry. Okay. See, you can tell the difference because my fives look like this and my S is totally different, right? <laughs> Completely not even close. Yeah, that's an S. Okay, I think I'm right. So now elimination, that works. This is negative 11S <laughs> equals a negative number. Is it 330,000? Well, I'm ignoring zeros a lot. I can tell you that much. Yeah. And it's easy to subtract 400 from 800 is 400, and then subtract 70 from 400 is 3. So, yeah. Then I'm dividing both sides by negative 11. Now, in this case, let's say my answer came out to be a negative number. Is the cost of a small van going to be, are they going to pay me to take the van? So that might give you some hint about, you know, whether you got it right. But let's see, 11 goes into 33 three times. And then we got one, two, three, four zeros. 30,000. Okay, figure out how much a large van is. much? Yeah, that's the small one, but the large one. Sitting there holding the calculator is going to be a little rough. Are you, uh, did you actually plug it in? 30,000 right here? 2 times L plus 3 times 30,000 equals 160,000.
Okay, how much is the large van? That's right, 35000 Yeah, only 5000 more. That's a deal. I don't know. Why would you want small ones and large ones? Kids are kidnapped. <laughs> I'm so happy your mind went directly to kidnapping. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to kidnap like six kids, you might want the big van. I, I, if you're just going to go for the one kid kidnap, I guess the small van's fine. Yeah. All right then. Right. Oh, you don't get caught. That's a fantastic lesson.